Right, let's bring in GOP Congressman Mike Turney. He's a member of the House Oversight Committee and chair of the House Intelligence Committee. First off, uh, uh, Chairman, your response to what was, Hunter's been charged with, what seems to be a plea deal that's going to keep him out of jail. Right, this is a ridiculous sweetheart deal, as, as everyone has been, been identifying. And they call it a, a, a pre-trial agreement, but in fact, it's pre-charge. I mean, they didn't even bring charges against Hunter um, until they already had this deal buttoned up, which is basically giving him uh, a free pass. Uh, in the end, though, he will be a convicted felon, uh, and this will not impact the House investigation on the sources of these funds. And from what we understand and from what you heard from the Department of Justice, the investigations are ongoing in the Department of Justice also. Uh, concerning the sources of those funds, which are very questionable, um, his dealings in Ukraine, and, and also the new documents that make allegations that even the, the, the uh, then Joe Biden vice president uh, might have been involved. What's your reaction to James Comer saying that he will continue this investigation into the Biden's family alleged scheme and trading money, millions of dollars? for policy or for, um, you know, for, for policy, for laws to be changed. Right. So the, the allegations in the FBI document, which I have, have read, are, are very serious. And they certainly lay out a scheme that's very consistent with what the Government Reform Committee and Chairman Comer has been finding uh, in, in other questionable payments that have been made and, and other uh, business relations and, and structures uh, that, that seem to have no real basis for, for business and raise the question of whether or not money laundering was occurring. You know, Chairman, uh, Kodak Black, uh, a rapper, um, said, attorney said that he hasn't seen a deal like this in his 26 years of practicing law where there's a gun charge as well as a tax charge, uh, and you get a sweet deal like and this. what did Kodak get in trouble for? Um, it, it, it was a gun. A, a well, social security number on the gun form. On the gun form. So he used his name in a different social security Exactly. Um, and so he went to prison. Exactly. Um, and, and it's other people, average day Americans, that have experienced the same thing. I'm being told that a deal like this also has to be approved by the Deputy Attorney General. So I guess my question is, does Congress g plan on hauling these people down to figure out what's going on? Because when you have average day Americans getting one deal and then the president's son getting another deal, that seems like it deserves some oversight. Uh, Lauren, you, you are absolutely right. I mean, what we're seeing here is, is really that the perversion of justice of it, it matters whose son you are. And certainly in this instance, it mattered if you were the son of the president of the United States who appointed the attorney general who's over the Department of Justice that's overseeing both your investigation, which unbelievably took five years and did not need to take five years, and then resulted in this slap on a wrist um, deal. This, is, uh, this certainly is, is a travesty of justice. I can tell you Hunter's not out of the woods yet, though, and uh, the, the House, uh, the Oversight Committee is on the issue of the source of these funds, because there's no real clarity Are as to bring how them, the Bidens I'm have I'm sorry to these. interrupt, Congressman, but do y'all plan on bringing the Deputy Attorney General to explain why they approve this deal. Well, Lawrence, I, I think certainly you're going to see several chairmen of, of committees attempt to do so. Um, the uh, the issue that you've raised is a very important one, and that's un inequality of justice. Uh, inequality of justice. Uh, we're seeing that coming out of the FBI on a routine basis when it comes to uh, you know celebrity Democrats, and we're certainly seeing it here. All right, so let's talk about the dorm report. We're going to see some uh, very fascinating testimony today, but you got some before behind closed doors yesterday, and most everybody's praising uh, the professionalism because there's no cameras rolling and the information that Durham was saying. Before I get to your take on it, Jim Himes came out and said uh, it's very clear there was a problem, but they said, that, to summarize, there was no political bias. Uh, that they found. They found uh, problems with, uh, with the investigation and predetermined ideas of where the investigation should go before you investigated, but no pol uh, politicization or anti-GOP uh, uh, motivation. Did you find that same thing? No, and, and neither did Durham. I mean, if you read the, the end of his report, he, com he clearly sets out that there's a bias uh, that resulted in both the investigation being opened wrongly, uh, and he sets out a, a path of misconduct throughout the FBI, and that's what we're going to hear today. We heard yesterday, um, Mr. Durham is very committed to the issue of identifying it. There was misconduct under uh, the Comey FBI uh, and the Department of Justice reviewing uh, this issue and pursuing Donald Trump. Imagine that the two years we lost as a country um, and what 
happened to the Trump presidency as a result of these baseless allegations. And we have the Horwitz investigation, the Mueller investigation, the Durham investigation, the Nunes investigation, all finding the same thing, that these were baseless allegations. It was a result of the Clinton plan um, that uh, you know, Hillary Clinton paid for uh, these allegations to be uh, then in basically uh, uh, put forth as opposition research that found its way to the FBI and became a full-blown investigation. Uh, this is, is political bias. This is obviously misconduct. This is the, the this is the other aspect of what we're worried about at the FBI. All right, and Himes is a Democrat from Connecticut, so maybe that's why he's saying that, Brian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's yeah. talk about COVID. Uh, a former U.S. official confirmed that a Chinese scientist by the name of Ben Hu which was partially funded by U.S. grants, was working in the Wuhan lab and was one of the three researchers who fell sick. All three scientists became ill with COVID-19-like symptoms. This was November of uh, 2019. So does this give credibility to the theory that this started, it originated in a lab? I think there's a number of, yes, and I think there's a number of things that, that uh that lend itself to the conclusion that this was a lab leak. As you know, Congress voted unanimously to require the administration to declassify the information that it had on uh, the, uh, the COVID origins. Uh, they were just supposed to release that June 17th and missed that date. Uh, we're pressing them now to make that information uh, publicly available. I've seen most of the um, of the classified portions of the report that the president had ordered in the 90-day review. And in that, I think people are going to be surprised because that report is very, very different to what the administration released publicly. Uh, they're going to have a greater picture, and I think this is going to help us get it to the What's bottom. What's the holdup, Congressman? I mean, what is so sensitive that is... That it can't be released to the American people. Well, and it's going to be. I mean, by law, it is. The president signed it. Congress unanimously passed it. Uh, they are late, but this is going to be released to the public. And I think it's certainly going to help inform the discussion. Yeah. All right, Congressman Turner, thanks so much. We we'll look Thank forward you. to the testimony today. Great. Thanks, guys.